We're back again so soon to talk about GX Season 2. I think overall I like Season 2 more. It has the same pitfalls as Season 1 and some of its own unique issues, but I like the Society of Light far more as the main antagonists of this season than I did the Shadow Riders of the last one. Even if some of the lesser important villains of this season are just as irrelevant as the ones from the first season, I think that their gimmicks and especially the English voices they were given make them far more entertaining, even if it is in an ironic sense sense. Huh? Oh. Hey, have you wasted all of your money on Yu-Gi-Oh cards so you can't enjoy video games anymore? Well then I got just the game for you. Raid Shadow Legends. It's a free dark fantasy RPG game that comes on mobile and PC with cross-device functionality, allowing you to play on the go anywhere, then in the comfort of your own home to jump right back on where you left off on your mobile device. There's plenty of characters to choose from, so if you're a fan of fantasy, there's definitely going to be something there for you. Battle against your friends in the PvP arena, and since it's crossplay, no friend gets left behind. There's also clan bosses, where you can fight alongside your clan members and teammates for amazing rewards. And now, the daily login reward program for new players has been doubled from 90 days to 180. Each day you can claim your free rewards ranging from energy refills, silvers and gems, to shards, and a free barbarian legendary champion, Seal of the Drake. Become one with Raid Shadow Legends. It has a 5-star rating on iTunes with nearly 200,000 reviews. The people have spoken. Download now. Go to the video description below, click the special link, and if you're a new player, you'll be awarded 50,000 silver and a free champion. What was I talking about? Alright, GX. So Season 2 opens up as everybody's second year at the Academy, and you might notice some new faces. Like my least favorite new addition, Bonaparte. He's basically taken the role that Crowler had in the last season where he wanted to destroy the Slifer Red Dorm, and he is probably one of the most insufferable characters I've ever seen. I fucking hate this character. I really don't understand his inclusion and what he actually adds to the season, other than forced conflict in filler episodes where main plot isn't happening. His inclusion is especially weird because in the early episodes of this season, Crowler seems to have reverted back to the character he was at the start of season 1, where he still hated all of these Slifer Reds and Jaden, which kind of undermined his arc at the end of season 1 after he got turned into a puppet by Camula, but then that gets thrown to the wayside again because Bonaparte becomes the annoying Crowler fill-in, and then Crowler stands up for them, even if occasionally he has the throw-in line of, oh, it's because I want to destroy the Red they also have a bunch of scenes together where they're talking about how the school is in the toilet, but other than having these continuous scenes which feel like they're just there to fill time, you never really see anything that makes it feel like this is an actual issue. Yeah, the Red Dorm is shit and what they're fed can barely be considered food, but that's how it's always been even when it was still considered a prestigious school back in the first season. Slifer Red was always used as the butt end of a joke. This season has a few voice changes, so let's go over those first at the beginning and just get them out of the way. For the one episode that Chumley comes back, is a different voice actor, and I personally really do not like it. He tries to sound like the original Chumley, but it just sounds really off. Who are you and what are you doing in my room? Jaden! Give me some love! Ojama King now has an Elvis Presley impression. Ojama Tokens, come to daddy! Thank you, thank you very much. Halfway through the season, Chaz's voice actor changed, and unlike Chumley's, his sounds closer to the original, but it always sounds like he has a cold and a sore throat. Face it, kid, whether we're wearing blue, yellow, red, or polka dots, you'll always be the same loser, and I'll always be the Chaz! Chaz it up! Chaz it up! Chaz it up! The Chaz has spoken! Hey, back off! Stop spreading lies! She's my soulmate, and I'd never do that to her! Since Chumley's off working in Pegasus' sex dungeon, we need someone to fill the roster. So now meet the new character, Tyranno Hasselberry, who has dino DNA due to his leg breaking and they replaced his femur with a dino fossil. So when he gets angry occasionally, he gets these Naruto Ninetail fox eyes and he starts growling like a dino. Overall, I think he's a pretty good addition to the cast, though in the earlier episodes I found him kind of annoying with how he constantly argues with 
Cyrus over who's Jaden's best friend, and this lasts for a while, but once that's settled, he has some decently entertaining duels, and actually plays a large role in the end of the season, unlike 90% of the cast. I really like the start of this season, with Chaz's duel against the snobby obelisk blue kid, and Cyrus's duel against the obelisk blue girl, where he gets to prove himself and is promoted to raw yellow. I think it's pretty apparent what I perceive as a good duel, but to reiterate it, the best duels are always the ones where there is an emotional stake for a character, and the duel is used as a vehicle for their growth. And I think there are quite a few duels in this season that are used as a good backdrop for character growth, but at the same time, there is equally just as many pointless and annoying duels that you could honestly skip over and nothing of value is lost. That is by far the biggest issue with the format of this season. For the first half of the first season, it was pretty much a slice-of-life anime with dueling. Most of it was wacky hijinks and occasionally there was some supernatural stuff, but overall there really wasn't an overarching story. So the quality of duels varied from episode to episode. And then they introduced the main villains, the Shadow Riders, and all of them except for one, in my opinion, had terrible motivations and were completely uninteresting as characters. This season, on the other hand, has an interesting villain with an interesting setup, but then occasionally there are episodes that completely sideline the main story to have stupid and inconsequential bullshit happen. Why do you think this video is way shorter than the last one? It's because half of these episodes in this season do not matter. Nothing happens in them. I can still remember watching this season week to week as a kid and absolutely hating some of these episodes. It just felt like an honest waste of time to reach 52 episodes. For example, when Jaden is lost in the woods trying to find his way back to Duel Academy, it takes him five episodes to do this. One of those episodes is a complete recap of the first season. Then Aster gets introduced as a character and he duels Zane with his elemental heroes, which are supposed to be evil versions, so all of them have more muted colors, so instead of the blue highlights in Sparkman, they're now black. Bersinitrix looks more like a smurf now because her skin is way more blue. Then he has the other elemental hero forms like Phoenix Enforcer. During Aster's interview, he has quite possibly one of the funniest lines in the entire series. I won't tell you his name, but it rhymes with Schmaden Schmooky. <gasps> Hear me, Schmaden? You know who you are, you card thief. This is also part of one of the more annoying dub changes from this season, where originally Aster says that there was another duelist who happened to make Elemental Heroes even though he did it first, and that he heard that this player was on par with Zane. So to prove that he was the better hero player, he was going to beat Zane, and then to quell any doubts, he then challenged Jaden and said his full name on TV instead of Schmaden Schmooky. Not to mention the fact the idea of copying someone's deck is completely stupid when they're fucking cards that everybody has access to, but the anime it runs by the logic of only one person can have this type of deck ever, or they're copying them. Which, if you think about it for more than two seconds, this is just a thinly veiled excuse so they can show off more unique cards because this is a weekly 22 minute ad to get kids to buy cardboard. One of the funniest censors this season is Aster's dad, because originally in the Japanese version he dies, but in this he's now just missing. So now there's a comically body shaped space on the floor where he was supposed to be. Aster also takes Destiny Hero. Dreadmaster out of his dead father's hand, but in the English version it just looks comically terrible as he picks it up off the floor. Not to mention that this change also softens his motivation, which is a running theme with the censorship in GX because there are a lot of character deaths that they have to shy away from and try to work around. After his loss to Aster, Zane becomes unable to win and becomes a complete has-been and washed up, to the point where he then enters the underground dueling circuit and develops a BDSM fetish. He becomes a complete edge Lord, and then when Cyrus confronts him later on in the season, he starts talking about how much he gets off to the electricity and it makes him feel alive while he's dueling. When I started dueling in the underground, I felt the same way. But then, I discover the pleasure of pain. At this point, they also bring back the running gag about how Chaz loves Alexis. And who's that? Oh, it's Mr. MVP! This season introduces the Neospatians, which are some of the worst monsters to grace the game. Yeah, some of them like Grand Mole and even Aqua Dolphin recently have had some applications, but their fusion monsters are all terrible because they have the clause of returning to the extra deck if Neospace is not on the field, which of course is an ability that Jaden doesn't know right away because just like every real life Yu-Gi-Oh player, they don't read their cards. This is also where Yu-Gi-Oh as a series starts to get obnoxious with cards magically appearing into people's decks 
because duels where Jaden is losing in this season, his deck will glow or his hand will glow, and then suddenly he has a new Neospatian that comes from outer space right into his hand so he can use, and then he wins the duel. Neos also replaces Flame Wingman as Jaden's ace monster, which I personally don't like because I think Flame Wingman is way cooler, but you gotta have your 2500 beat stick or else it can't be the main character's ace monster. I can't believe they nerfed Aqua Dolphin's ass in the dub. Sadly, this wouldn't be the first Konami-owned IP to have their ass nerfed. At least the Neospatians have a hilarious origin story. Back when Jaden was an elementary student, Kaiba was hosting a contest for people to create their own cards, and Kaiba would make them into real cards, put them on a satellite, and shoot them out into space because, as he says, If there is intelligent life out there, then let's teach him how to duel. I really wish they made the food cards that the Yellow Dorm Chef used real. Can you imagine going to a YCS and you're like, yeah, I'm using a food deck and my win con is Hungry Burger. Who wouldn't want to own a Ghost Rare Potato Man? One thing that always bothered me that I thought was kind of weird is on the back of these magazines that Jaden's looking at, you can see the Sacred Beasts. Weren't they supposed to be these top secret world ending monsters that were locked away? How is there renders of them on a magazine? Once the school takes their field trip to Domino City, it's kind of a mixed bag. On one hand, it's a clever way to recap the events of Duel Monsters, but at the end of the day, it's still a recap. And in the dub, they made Solomon Moto a senile old man who can barely hear and is mostly just there for unfunny jokes. All right, are we going in that virtual world or not? Tell me you're kidding. I don't want pudding. That stuff wreaks havoc on my gallbladder. Cyrus and Hasselberry's duel against the two Monarch players is actually pretty cool. It draws reference to the original tag duel with Kaiba and Yugi. Then to further draw illusion and reference things from the original series, they go into the digital world again and have to duel Sartorius' sister. The only way they could have referenced duel monsters harder is if they had the five-headed dragon show up. While I like the Society of Light as the main villains of this season, the only issue with them is since they're focused around mind control and being a cult, characters who become assimilated into their group early, get hardly any screen time where they're not brainwashed, and then other characters that get brainwashed later don't get to do anything beforehand, like Bastion, who doesn't actually have a full legit duel on screen the entire season before he gets assimilated. We see a already in progress duel against Jaden in episode 57, where Jaden then beats him in a single turn right before they go to watch Zayn vs. Aster, then it's another 25 episodes before his duel versus Chaz where he then becomes a part of the society of white. Then two episodes later we see another already in progress duel where he wins in a single turn against a literal Who character. Bastion is the TN of GX. The story makes complete sense why Bastion would want to lose and join the dorm in order to gain validation from Sartorius, but I wish it was written so he could see himself as saving the day and getting to be the hero instead of Jaden to prove his skills and only to fail by losing to Chaz. I would have much rather him go down unable to win as a hero than be swayed by the cult only for him to to become a gag with him running across the campus naked. If he actually became any sort of threat after joining the society, I don't think I would have had any issue with him making himself lose after having the victory right in his grasp. You see the end of this episode and it's foreboding and you're like, oh shit, now they have some real firepower on the Society of Light besides just Chaz and Alexis. But then Bastion does nothing. He gains no validation. He's just a gag that's used a few times throughout the rest of the season. There's another weird continuity error after Bastion finishes his duel. The people leaving the dorm to go join the society say that Bastion's now the last raw yellow. It looks to me like you're all that's left now. Look at the bright side. You have the place to yourself. But the episode after this, you can see tons of raw yellows running around during the Gen X tournament. So where did these guys come from? The one thing that makes these inconsequential duels semi-watchable is the voices that are given to some of these characters in the dub. That's why, Poopy Ed! My mommy says I'm really strong! At this point, I was really contemplating my life choices that led me to this. And then Lorenzo's voice was the final nail in the coffin. Yeah. So how do you like this? Bada bang! I'll shuffle these boys real good! This is definitely the most Konami's done with Gradius in the last 15 years. Now that the Gen X tournament has started, this is where I think the season begins to dip in quality because there are the duels that are just completely inconsequential like I mentioned earlier, like Jaden's duel against the Kabuki stage actor, the game show guy that's trying to win Alexis's love. Cyrus has a duel against Zane to try to bring him back to his senses, but Zane just goes off about how much tasing his balls gets him off for the entire duel. It's kind of weird when you think about it, but Banner's soul spends 90% 
90% of the season bored by the Cat Pharaoh, and only occasionally comes out to give Jaden some words of wisdom only to then fly right back into its stomach. One of the hilarious edits that is added to the dub is the tear that rolls down Ra's face in the episode where Jaden duels the fake Ra stolen by Pegasus' employee. Couldn't you consider it nepotism that after Chumley starts working for Pegasus, he makes a card that directly benefits Jaden's deck and Jaden's deck only? The best duel of this season is the Chaz vs. Jaden duel, where Jaden is trying to break Chaz free of Sartorius' control, all the while Chaz is going on a Shakashori vision quest in his mind. What doth life, life, life? Are we just fleshy blips in some meaningless stew of cosmic oblivion? Or is it vice reversa? I love how this episode characterizes Chaz normally as an utter slob, with the gang telling him how he normally acts, to contrast how he's acting now, to make him realize that he's being mind controlled, where once he breaks free of the mind control, he gives his best one-liner in the series. Like I always say, if it can't hide the dirt, then I don't want it over my shirt. Actually, I just made that up. I also thoroughly enjoy that after he breaks free of his mind control, he gets to do things in the season, and ends up winning the Gen X tournament, which makes up for how they did him dirty at the end of the last season and how they made him completely insufferable for most of this one. Though his final duel with Blair to win the tournament creates a continuity error, because the dub made Blair younger in the first season, saying that she was a second grader and only seven. Now she's supposedly graduated elementary school, as stated by Alexis, but this is only supposed to be a year after the first season season, so she would only be a third grader by the logic of the dub. Aster faces off against his mentor, who turns out is the one who killed his father. The guy changed his name to The D, but the dub cuts out the best part of this. In the sub, they refer to Destiny Hero Plasma, which was the card that was stolen, as the Ultimate D. So, The D is wielding the Ultimate D, as opposed to, you know, Little D, or the Lord of D. I'm 90% sure this is supposed to be a Devilman reference. Then Pegasus shows up and explains the plot of the season to Chancellor Shepard. There is this big white hole somewhere out in space that exudes energy, and is now living in the Destiny Hero Plasma card, which is what is controlling Sartorius. This energy of light is supposedly throwing off the balance of light and dark in the world. Ignoring the whole plot point from Dual Monsters where Tem erased the concept of evil and darkness from all space and time. There will not be another. You have conquered the embodiment of pure darkness from which all evil is born. So I'm done? Yeah, remember I told you to don't think too hard about that one. This light energy is also the reason behind natural disasters and multiple wars throughout human history. Now that that's out of the way, we can talk about how Sartorius' plan is changed from the sub to the dub. In the dub, he takes the satellite from the prince that shows up in Duelist Academy and then he beats him without even having a single turn, and he's going to use it to mind control the entire planet. But in the sub, what they're trying to do is use the satellite laser to destroy the planet. This leads to Dingleberry having an outer body experience where he turns into a T-Rex, then flies out into space with Glow Neos to fight the satellite, which then the ghost of Sartorius' sister that was trapped in a computer appears in front of them to block the lasers. You must hurry! My power won't last long. I uploaded myself to the satellite's central computer. First strike is yours. I think the Maturia weed's kicking in. While this is happening, Sartorius is dueling Jaden and summons There are those who come! Yeah, get your funny JoJo references in now, kids. I haven't mentioned it yet, but I absolutely hate how Sartorius duels in this season, because he has these spinning cards, and depending on if it lands right side up or upside down, because it's supposed to be tarot cards, they get different effects. Obviously, this is an incredibly contrived way to have him always win, because he controls destiny, making duels incredibly boring to watch, to the point where it just feels like a waste of time for him to explain, if it lands right side up, I get this effect, and if it lands right side down, I don't get it. Because, obviously, unless he he's dueling Jaden, and it is a crucial moment where he needs to fail or else Jaden is going to lose, he's always going to get the effect. At this point, the best duel in the season has already happened, and even as a kid, the Sartorius duel always struggled to keep my attention. And I think that's because it keeps jumping between the duel with Jaden and Sartorius and the duel with Chaz and Blair. So once Jaden inevitably wins, everybody just walks outside and it's kinda just over. Like, obviously it's going to end on a happy note, but I can't help but feel that this is 
somewhat lacking. I think this season's ending would have landed better if it followed the format of the first one. So the fourth and third to last episodes are the final duel with Jaden versus the main villain. Then the second two would be the duel with Blair versus Chaz, similar to how season one ends with Jaden versus Zane. It would feel like more of a conclusive ending instead of switching back and forth between these two ongoing duels where you can't really get engaged into either one of them, especially when the second one doesn't feel that high stakes wise. Overall, Season 2 is pretty solid. I definitely like the main villains far more, but I do think it kind of fumbles in the second half, especially with how many filler episodes there are. If you just skip those, it's not nearly as bad. If you've made it this far into the video, I just want to say thank you for watching as always. The Season 3 video probably isn't going to be anytime soon. I don't really want to make a whole big deal and be dramatic about it, but frankly, I'm pretty burnt out on making these videos. So for a while, I just want to focus on videos and projects that I've just been chomping at the bits to finally work on. Hopefully with the break from these videos, I'll be able to come back and make Season 3 the best one and it'd be really funny and everyone loves it. If you like the channel, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. Now I'm going to shout out all of my $5 patrons. Sorry if I get any of your names wrong. CEO of Soup, Joshua D. Lorino, Scarlet Kingdom, Bully, Benjamin Johnson, HB33, Starfox, Flarboo, Mitchell, Oods of Nudes, Clem Edwards, Tabriz Sadiq, and Chachomatrius. Thank you all for supporting this channel. It really means a lot. If you happen to be a Yu-Gi-Oh player or any card game player, you could use my affiliate link in the description below to shop on TCG Player and anything you buy will help support the channel. You can follow me on Twitter to keep up to date on what I'm currently working on and what I'm currently playing and seeing unfunny memes that I occasionally post. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.